I'm kind of hoping I do. Cause I'll be honest with you, you get it together, I kind of want to go for a ride now. We'll be yeah. So, today, big update. The, uh, the Rambler is leaving. I haven't had time to film anything yet. <laughs> uh, uh, the Rambler is leaving today. So, uh, you guys are going to get to see that and you're going to get to see what I traded it for. So, the uh, new owner over here, Seth, he's seems to be very excited about the car. So, I was, and it's staying local, so I'm still going to get to see it. So, I'm excited for that too. But, you guys are going to get to see us load it up, drop it off, all that fun stuff. But let's go show you what I got and get it unloaded. So, some people, this is probably not going to make sense. I don't even know if it makes complete sense to us. Uh, the, about, about all the, yeah, the engine is really good. I will give you that. Hopefully it works. Yeah, right. <laughs> Got to get that part figured out yet. Uh, I am trading it for an 88 Jeep Comanche. It's a two-wheel drive five-speed with a rebuilt four-liter in it. So downside is it doesn't currently start we think it's I think it's either a grounding issue or ECM. the ecm is bad one of the two don't think it's anything too crazy but uh it's kind of a bucket list little truck because i love my i love the little mini trucks but uh i always wanted to ruin a jeep and piss off all the jeep community so this seemed like a great way to do it because what what angers jeep people more than a stock jeep a lowered stock jeep <laughs> So, yeah. All right, enough of my rambling, let's get to it.
yeah it's like for some reason you know lowering it might have been a bad idea for uh the purposes of hauling it i mean who could have really guessed that? i know right <laughs> i would have never thought lowering the car was going to make things harder Shit, did, I do it? did you i think i did it somehow <laughs> man just be careful of the brake line because this does have new brake lines on it and and they're ran questionably kind of well because i removed all the old brake line would you put steel in or copper the uh the easy bend copper stuff that's what i like too because it doesn't rust either. oh it doesn't really rust and it you know it's easier to work with if you're braver than me i'd feel like i'd die right there uh, you know what they say you only live once or whatever <laughs> Uh, this is this is the YOLO moment of the video. Hey, I'm a Christian man. I wasn't put here for a long time. I was put here for a good time. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wait, on the other end of this, why did I do all the ratcheting? This is your car. Yeah, I know. I was, I was waiting, <laughs> you were waiting to for it. <laughs> I was like, if I can get away with not doing jack, then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I was like, I mean, he's over there winded, but I'm still not going to say a word. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't blame you, because getting it up there at the winch is a pain in the dick. I'm like, you know what, you're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to argue with you. Well, the theory was I rented the trailer and stuff, so I guess if someone's got to be responsible for it, you know what I mean? This is probably a bad idea that I don't have this insured yet. <laughs> I mean, the truck's insured. I'm not worried. That truck, not the other truck. I ain't, nah, not yet. It starts, then I'll worry about insuring it. Until then, nah, it's good. <laughs> so. Mike, uh, uh, you have uh, how many more straps do you have? Uh, there is three or four in the bed of the truck. So I might grab another one. So, oh, holy crap, getting up here is hard with one hand. Especially in the back of the truck, still jacked up. There are three more identical to the one that you have. They are now currently on the front of the trailer. Uh, one should be enough back there because at the end of the day we're not going oh fuck we're not going that far yeah, i just want to make sure because i'll probably be behind you that it doesn't end up into my truck <laughs> that's fair <laughs> that's be fun to explain to explain to your insurance company yeah i need to call and put insurance on a car and make a claim what do you mean why well, i just bought a 63 rambler and it's uh it's currently well what's left of it's made of steel oh the truck yeah the truck's made of steel you're gonna have to call the insurance company i need to put insurance on the rambler and then make a claim on the rambler and my truck do what <laughs> you're not going to be happy about it but i'm assuming that's a sway bar we're gonna use that no, there's no sway bar. You're probably looking at the uh, control arm or something. Yeah, that's the that keeps the rear end centered side to side oh. onto the uh, or, or not side to side. Like I don't know how to explain it. It's it's weird. The suspension on this car is weird. That was a Ford Ranger. You ever looked at this? Oh, yeah, but it's not as weird as this. No. This thing is like working on it's weird. So that's why honestly when I was dicking with all of it, if I had to, if I pulled the transmission again, I was pulling the engine and transmission together. That's probably what I'll do. So I don't think you need to worry about a second one on the back. I think the back will be fine. I'm not it's not like I'm gonna do 80 to your dad's house, I'm gonna do 2530. I mean if your balls are enough. <laughs> Touche. Uh, maybe I'd put maybe another one on the front, Joe, just so we're not completely reliant on this this time. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Don't worry, I'll get under. <laughs> yeah, I got it up on the trailer. You can you can get it to stay on the trailer. That way, when it does come off the trailer, it's your fault, not mine. You won't be seeing me if it comes. <laughs> I'll be gone. Oh, if it comes off the trailer, we'll both be gone because I ain't going back for it. It ain't my name no more. I'm like, what? Someone's <laughs> Someone's. <laughs> Gosh dang it. I It left my ownership for five seconds and then it's just. I just parked so, it, I swear. Somehow ended up in the middle of Main Street on Finley. What the hell? That is not my fault. I had nothing to do with that, officer. Officer oh, Sissifer? Yeah. <laughs> do I look that stupid? <laughs> do, I, do I look like I would, I would commit those kind of street crimes, officer? I would never. Don't look at my record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where the upside is. Other than drag one racing, time, <laughs> other than one time of getting caught doing 60 in a 35, right by the state patrol office. Probably not the best place to be doing that. Um, I, my record's actually relatively clean. <laughs> 88 to 55, come back to Tiffin. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> I am just trapping myself under here right now. <laughs> oh, I'm being chat. Yeah, the, oh. the state patrol officer pulled me over and was not impressed. He uh, <laughs> he was not having anything to do the, with any of it. Do you know how fast you were going? The dude that pulled me over was laughing so hard because <laughs> he came up the window and he's like, "Sir, do you know why I pulled over?" I was like, "You got me." <laughs> <laughs> he, got me. He, he was like, he just started laughing in my window, and he was like, "Do you know how fast you're going?" I was like, "Be honest with you, not until I saw you." <laughs> like, because I, I we were going. So I, by the way, he put medium traffic. There was really nobody out there. Yeah. I saw him, and he was the first car I saw in like ten minutes. But I, I was going, I just flew past him, and I was like, oh shit. Oh, I looked down, okay. and I saw, I was like 88. I was like, oh shit. Looked at my rear view, and I saw him turn, and I was like, ah, yeah. shit. <laughs> Pulled over. <laughs> I had a similar experience in a 93 Ford Festiva. Ow. <laughs> that I can't do. Well, he got me, I was doing, I think it was 75 or 76 in the 55. And uh, he pulls me over. I pull over. I'm, I'm like, I think 18, 19 at the time. If no, if that, I might have still been like 17. And he pulled me over. He's like, no, I pulled you over. I'm like, like, yeah, I was speeding. I am sorry. I didn't realize how fast I was going. And he's like, and he stopped and he went. So my gun was right. How fast do you think you were going? I was like. I think the speed we were set out was doing like 75. He's like, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, you were. He's like, honestly, I didn't believe my gun. <laughs> so. <laughs> so he's like, I, he's like, I'm not gonna give you a ticket because, well, I still don't fully believe all this just happened the way I it did. Know, like, Sir, you need to get that gun tested. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, at that age, I didn't know better. Now I do. Now it's denied, denied, denied. The best. I was like, well, fuck yeah, you caught me. I was going too fast. I think uh, I, I had some. Let me think here. One funny one I had was me, the buddy who we had that it, truck. We get it on the other arm. That's cool. Um, the buddy that had the truck before me, uh, another couple of friends, I had lost my license. I loaned my car to the guy that was driving. I was in the passenger seat. And this person in front of us going like 40, like over, like 35, 40, down to 55. So I told him to pass it and give it the beans, whatever. He wanted to drive it. It was a Subaru Legacy. Yeah. Guns it. These two behind me, buddy's in like a, one of those Kia SUVs, like the Sorento. And another one's in a Saturn. Fucking, they both get over at like the exact same time. Unbeknownst to me, there's a sheriff behind all of them. The guy in the back knew, didn't tell any of us about it. <laughs> and he's like, watch this shit, watch this shit. They're gonna get fucked, watch it. it <laughs> dude, he had no humor about it at all. I bet not. Dude, steady, 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 steady. Sheriff, sheriff. I'm the whole road. You know where Dix is, right? Yeah. Whole road lined up with stadies and fucking sheriff cars. 
searching into our shit with their flashlights and shit. The dude in the back, he was an idiot. I don't talk to him anymore. Told the, he pulled out a baggie of sleeping pills he had, like melatonin style sleeping pills. He's like, officer, these aren't drugs. These are for me to uh, help go to sleep. And he handed them to him. So there was tons of cops there for like some drug raid and for street racing. He lined them all up for street racing. And my buddy, my buddy who owned that truck fought it. He's like, I was in a Kia Sorento. I'm not racing anybody in a Kia Sorento. <laughs> He's like, do you see what I'm in right now? That's not how this works. <laughs> so he worked at the pilot up there uh, in Van Buren. So we were riding back from there. And that's what all happened. Oh, man. That was, that was one of the craziest ones. The other one I had was here in town over by Chipotle. The one over on the Avenue. Yeah. I was driving down that one road that's not a 55, but everyone thinks it is. Yeah. And I did. I was in the Firebird. I was going 55 down it. Stady saw me, turned around, pulled me over. That's not the interesting part. My now ex-wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was in the car. She was getting her license. And she went into the do cruising two for her license stuff. Yeah. And you know how they have a stady come in and talk. <laughs> it was, that stady it was the stady that pulled me over. And they were asking the questions like, "What can you get pulled over for?" And she was like, "I was sitting there just trying to wonder who the hell, like, where do I know him from?" And I guess he, someone went, "You can be pulled over for speeding." He's like, "Yeah, actually, I pulled over a classic car the other day for speeding." It was like, and someone asked the color, was like, yeah, it's red. And she was like, I went so wide-eyed when I realized who it was. Because the teacher, who was also my teacher, was, her name's like Becky or something. She went, I hope it wasn't one of my students. <laughs> and I was like, that's awesome. Oh. <laughs> because it was. If I was there, I would have raised her hand. I'm, like, I'm here to disappoint both of you. <laughs> she it was my boyfriend and it was your student. <laughs> You it was, failed. <laughs> it, it was it was apparently uh, she ended up being her little driver, like passenger car driver. And she told her about it <laughs> so later on. But I was the that's like one of the other funniest ones that uh, happened. I think the one that made me shit my pants the most though was we were out. Why is it always ninety nine? Um, <laughs> ninety oh, ninety nine because that's where down you're past floor. where it turns into where it goes from four lane down to two lane again. Yeah. Me and this girl in a brand new at the time, because I think it was like a 2019 Camaro SS. I was in eight foots. That shows you how stupid this whole scenario fucking was. This basically, I'm just holding the 86 at wide open, just all the way down 99. We done blew through two of the lights over 100 mile an hour. And. I just keep a foot planted in it. I, somewhere right around, and it's just her going back and forth. Just, just blow by me, let off, laugh at me, blow by me again, let off, blow by me. It's just back and forth. Because she's having fun with it. I'm just at this point saying, well, what the fuck the car got? Yeah. I should mention it wasn't that 86, it was the 86 I had before. Yeah. I, I saw your video. Um, and we get down. The, the first stop sign after it finally dies down from four lane down to two lane, there's a state he said at stop sign. I don't know how far he could see us from, but I knew how far away we were that I could see him from, and my speedometer still said a number well above 55 mile an hour. Um, he, we pull up to the stop sign. And somewhere in all this, we blew by a, like a pickup truck right at the merge, too. So the dude in the pickup truck pulls up behind us. And the cop casually pulls out from the stop sign, pulls up, turns his lights on, parks his car opposite of the side of the road from us, walks up to the Camaro. I'm guessing he had to see her going fast. Because yeah. she kept blowing by me. I don't know to this day what she said, nothing. <laughs> I don't know what she said. But when it ended, he went, got back in his car, walked by me, didn't even look at me, got back in his car, and left. I was like, 
we just got away of doing 130 plus. My ass is going directly the fuck home. <laughs> well, did you know that was his daughter? <laughs> so no, I think at that point in time, she was fairly skinny, relatively busty, and covered in tattoos. She had a and and her. had a very good habit of not buttoning like the top five buttons. Um, so, yeah, you might be right, and I do believe her Instagram was on the side of the car window. Back from being an Instagram model, it was popular. Now it's a OnlyFans. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not so sure if... He's seen a couple of them. Uh, he, he's seen nice the special section, I'm assuming, at that yeah. point. I don't know. None of my he's, business. He's I don't paid, care. I didn't get busted for 130 in a 55, <laughs> so I'm I'm good. You know, surprisingly, fastest I've taken the WRX 110. I've never gone faster. Than that. I've had the other 86 before that one. 130 ish. Right, it's somewhere between 130 and 135. And I've had the Celica that fast too. The Celica runs at RPM. The only reason it because like you can let off, go back down to 125, punch it, and go right back. It'll do it all day. It just it runs out of RPM to go past it. The it sucks. Silverado's governor the 111. I found that out the hard way in the embarrassing way. Picked up my girlfriend from Florida, because or not from Florida, from the airport because she was coming yeah. back from Florida. And uh, I was like, I'm just curious what it'll top out as. So <laughs> right. I slammed it. Friggin' 111. <laughs> Friggin' RPMs don't. Oh, let me tell you guys about today. Holy crap. So if you notice one of the last things you've seen, I got sis back there with me. One of the last things you all seen was me dropping or us loading the Rambler up. And you haven't really seen anything since then. Well, that's because somewhere in all that, uh, if you notice watching the video, me and dude never put ramps back on the trailer in the video. Well, come to find out, we didn't put them on after the video either. Uh, I drove <laughs> a couple mile. Uh, I think it's about four mile to where we were going with the ramps just on the back of the trailer, like on the ground. <sighs> um, we got to where we were going, and um, one of the ramps wasn't there anymore. It, it fell off somewhere. Well, we proceeded to drive around for oh about a half hour, following the route that I took to get to where we were going trying to find it mention I should mention two of the roads we were on are two of the busiest roads in this damn town so like how I managed to make it that far no one honked a horn no one like flagged me down or nothing no one also hit the ramp either <laughs> you waving back there um so, come to figure out, the ramp had popped off the trailer right after I went over a set of railroad tracks, right beside a U-Haul place. Two guys that work for the U-Haul, but don't work at that U-Haul, seen it, went, oh hey, that must be one of our ramps. They picked it up threw it in the back of the U-Haul truck they had with them that they had to run to Toledo with. So the ramp that never needed to leave Finley has made it from Toledo, or from Finley to Toledo, back to Finley again, <laughs> and is now with me on the trailer so I can hopefully go pick up the MG yet. It has been a day. <laughs> And I'm so glad I found the ramp. I'm I'm very thankful for the U-Haul place that they went out of their way considering I was not a paying customer. I was nothing, nothing to them to get me the ramp back. And like no hassle. They didn't ask for anything. No, nothing. They just, here's your ramp back. Sorry we took it. I'm like, sorry yeah, you took it. If it wasn't for you guys picking it up, someone would have hit it. I... I could have been looking at, oh, God knows what, fines, fucking fees, you know, tickets from the city, you name it. I, Y'all saved my ass. <laughs> uh, you're great. So, yeah, uh, it's been a day, but I'm hoping 
here in a minute, I'm going to swing around and pick up the MG from my buddy Ryan. Uh, or, <laughs> I called him. I called him my Tamaya guy last video, and he gave me so much crap for that. He's like, oh, I'm just a Tamaya guy. I was like, I'm so much more than a Tamaya guy. I was like, I know you are. I know you are. He he's a, he's been a longtime friend. He's been a work friend. He's been a good friend outside of work. He is general RC guy. MG, he's the he's the entire fault of the whole MG thing because he got the GT first and I was in love with the car the moment he had it on the trailer. Um, and I've had four of them since then. <laughs> I think three, four. I don't know. I've owned the M, I've owned the GT from him like four times now. Uh, he is currently the owner again. We'll see how long it lasts this time. I think this time it's permanent. But yeah. So hopefully I'll have an MG to show you guys, and then I'll show you around the Jeep. Um, I know that seems like an odd trade, but it's kind of a bucket list little truck, and I've always had a thing for wanting to ruin a Jeep by lowering it. And uh, a two-wheel drive Jeep Comanche seems like the best way to make that happen. Um, I've always wanted to do like the little Jeep rod thing. This isn't going to work for that, but it's got a freshly rebuilt engine. It just needs to put back together. Lowering it is crazy cheap, crazy easy too, actually. Um, so it just, it makes sense for what I want to do and how I'm going to do it. So hopefully you guys enjoy it as I do it. Because it's going to be a couple videos. Um, and uh, admittedly, while the Rambler is theoretically in better shape. Um, and as much as I wanted to finish it for the channel, I had no motivation left for that car. It has been the bane of my existence for longer than I can even think at this point and I was just I was just over it if I didn't do what I did now it was just gonna set and rot into the dirt and I, nothing was going to happen with the car so yeah let's see oh all right he's already even got it out maybe this won't be that bad all right I'm gonna shut this off and get this done So there we go. It is loaded up onto the trailer. I gotta grab a couple more parts yet. I'm gonna double check how tight I got that ratchet strap and put those on the trailer this time. And uh, we'll get it home. Um, this, you notice that's my old MG. Uh, this is not one you guys will be seeing on the channel for a while. Uh, some other projects gotta get done first. Then this one will get started. Um, but until those other projects are done 
this one will not be getting touched uh and i'm also debating on whether I ha on how crazy i'm going with this car because uh as much as i like the blue one and as much as i liked this one um neither one were exactly what i want this one was in worse condition than i could use for what i wanted to do uh the blue one's in better condition and we enjoy driving it as is so this one kind of falls in the middle and i can engine swap this if i want and not feel bad about it um <clears throat> i would really like to put like a 22r or a 22re in one i think that'd be a lot of fun and uh be a lot more reliable so i'd really in a roundabout way like to find a little um toyota truck like a late 80s uh rip the wiring out of it rip the engine the transmission out of it and drop into this um, i think it'd be a very nice setup in it and then lower it a little bit and a few other things now that being said this car while it does not look good does run um someone had started doing some work to it the work is not the prettiest stuff in the world but it uh it'll clean up and it won't be bad there's some other spots that me and my buddy were talking about i need to go through and deal with this uh was not something either one of us had noticed how bad it was when we were originally talking about it so i don't know what this is going to take to straighten out a little bit more um and then i noticed there's a rust crack in the other side in a similar spot this is what that should look like but this needs cut out and patched um some other spots need some work done to them as well uh needs an interior needs some floorboard work uh i did promise him that either this thing would get done and it would not be a parts car or it'll come back to him one or the other so we'll see how far i get with that uh so i said hopefully this isn't the last time you guys see it but it might be so all right time to get it done get it home all right now that i'm through everything i will give you guys a little better look of the 88 comanche and explain a little bit better on why i think this wasn't a bad trade um so because looking at it it is not the cleanest prettiest looking thing in the world obviously but the underside is fairly clean so the fourth matching rim is in the bed of the truck all four tires are shot though so that's whatever but i do have plenty of five by 114 bolt pattern wheels and some wheel adapters laying around that should let me fit just about any set of wheels i have on it that i want all that being said it, it's got a lot of work that needs done prior to me even worrying about that starting with the fact that it does not run currently this this four liter has been completely rebuilt but it doesn't it has never been started because it's either got a grounding issue or the ECM is shot. Not sure which one yet. I got to work my way through it. Um, talking to the guy that I got it from, Seth, he is very certain it's the ECM. They've went through everything with the grounding. Um, as you can see, there's currently no dash in it because they had the entire dash harness part because the old dash harness, which is back here in a box, these things have a notorious problem of the clutch master cylinder springing a leak and then it leaking directly into the fuse box. So knowing that was an issue, they've got another harness, put it in with a clean fuse box in hopes that that was the problem. Well, still didn't start. So they changed the ECM to a used one, still doesn't start. So... At this point, it is either A, the grounds, which are notoriously bad on these things and very underwhelming. Either the grounds are bad still, and that's not letting it start, or the new ECM and the old ECM are both bad, which is very frustrating for him because as me and him were talking about it. They didn't pull the engine out and rebuild it because it wasn't running. It was actually running very well, but it smoked a little bit, if I remember correctly on what he said. 
So they were pulling it apart, rebuilding it. They put a 95 head and stuff on it because, well, that ups the power a little bit. And that was kind of what they were going after. They weren't trying to make a real big hot rod out of it. But they were trying to give it a little bit more pep. So that should not be the cause of why it's not running. Unless for some reason the timing's off. Well, right now it's not getting any spark. So if it's not getting any spark, there's nothing for it to... No way for it to start. So... I've got to figure that out. That's where I'm at with it. But all that being said, that engine is why I kind of feel like this was not a bad deal. Because at the end of the day, other than the bed sides, there's no real rust on the rest of the truck. This fender's not exactly the cleanest thing in the world. But the rest of the truck's not bad. Everything else is just some surface rust here and there. And even this, this is solid. It looks worse than it is. This is bad. But... I also didn't get rid of the wheels and tires from the Rambler, and he may have given me a few hundred bucks on top. So, realistically, at this point, I am maybe, maybe a thousand dollars into this thing, which for me is not bad, because I looked at the dash, the dash is laying right there. The dash is in good shape. It was inside the Jeep. Um, the seats appear to be at least relatively decent there's obvious wear hole there and here passenger side seat looks to be okay though so i've got a different steering wheel that has the same three bolt hub and everything so i might be able to just throw that steering wheel on i think once i get it together it won't be half bad and then the plan is from there these things are actually relatively cheap to lower i can have this car or i can have this car i can have this truck setting with a three inch front drop and a four inch rear drop for about 210 bucks given that is because the wife's able to get parts relatively cheap with her discounts at work and stuff so anyone else did it it'd be pushing 300 bucks but still that is cheap for that kind of a drop and i don't got to worry about a lot of suspension alignment stuff because these things are actually still technically a solid front axle so they're actually really easy to swap the four wheel drive so that makes doing the front super easy that makes literally the front is just a set of springs and a set of shocks spring just springs if i really wanted to be cheap and the back is a set of three inch drop blocks and a set of xj rear shackles super simple so the hope is i can clean the grounds get it to run get it put back together do the drop throw a set of wheels onto it ruin a jeep get a giggle when all the jeep community is mad at me for it and have a decent little driver for work that is the hope that is the hope we're going to see how that goes though i'm not holding my breath on it working like that but we'll see what happens so yeah yeah then also as you guys seen i picked up finally went and picked up my mgb for my buddy ryan uh <laughs> it is now that is its home for the foreseeable future but oh here's the hood for the truck too by the way i do have that so yeah so hopefully i don't know if i'm gonna try to make this run this video uh, i don't think i am i think the, <laughs> the adventure that today has been is probably about what it's going to be along with our little trip up to Kosai. So, I'm not gonna lie, the uh, trip to Kosai was, that bit of the video is more for my sister that I know watches than it is for uh, everyone else. I know she'll enjoy that, so. Right? Ah, oh, and my father-in-law. Uh, I'm finding out very quickly, my family actually watches me and that has me concerned because I know what they all do. I know y'all got better things to do with your time, but thank you. Thank you a lot. Ah. <laughs> so, but all right. I'll bring you back when I decide what I'm doing. So, now that I've cleared the smoke out of the garage a little bit, I can think again. Whew. Um, all that was wrong with it is really surprising. Um, 
Especially with the way me and Seth, the guy I got it from, talked about everything he went through trying to figure it out. Uh, some other stuff I'm trying to get figured out. Um, all it was, was he somehow overlooked all of the ground wires right here coming out of this harness. They were like wrapped up and around, mixed in with a couple zip ties. I grounded those out and the distributor was 180 out. I didn't even do like a good job setting the timing right now. I literally just, I bumped it over till the, it pushed my finger off with the compression and I pulled it out. It was literally pointed right here. So it was pointed dead on 180 out. I took it out, flipped it around, lined it up where this one was, dropped it all back together, bumped the key. Actually, I didn't even bump the key. I bumped my old loser switch here. Yeah, yeah, more key repair. Um, and it fired off so quick, it freaked me out. I ran over and shut it off. I did all that off camera because I didn't think I was getting it to run yet. I really didn't. I thought I was waiting for the ECM because dude had me convinced it was the ECM. Apparently it wasn't. So here we are. Uh, yeah. So I guess from here, I'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to end this video with... I'm going to show you exactly what I got planned. Yeah, it's still a little smoky in here. Oh, hey, she's got the belt. And we're both dying now. You're welcome. <laughs> this is the big reason why I didn't want to let it run too long. Because there is no accessories hooked up. And there is no antifreeze in it. I'm also going to need upper and lower radiator hoses. Okay. So. Well, remind me tomorrow. I'm in the yep. It's the uh, upside of my uh, parts person living with me. <laughs> I can tell them to get me stuff after hours. And then complain when they forget in the morning. And I got to go up and get them anyway because that makes sense to do yeah yeah but anyway so the basic plan is at this point oh i think the coolant hose situation took care of itself i'll explain that in a minute though okay. basic situation is now is i want to get it back together obviously and i want to do a three four drop on it now a three four drop is kind of a truck thing um Basically, it means I'm going to drop the front end three inches and I'm going to drop the rear end four inches. What that does is it gets the whole truck lower, obviously, but it also levels it out front to rear. And then this is where that right there is already going to make enough Jeep people upset. But then what I'm really going to do to really make Jeep people upset is those are what's going on it. So no one's going to like that, but that's what I'm doing. These are a set of 17s. They've got a... Uh, 235 45 17 tire wrapped on them they are obviously slightly shorter than stock um so they're going to give me a little bit more of a drop nothing too crazy though ah if i can get this up there uh they need refinish too obviously but yeah that's what's going to go on it and that's what's going to happen if i don't maybe pull these off of there and put on there i haven't quite decided yet it could go either way um but I have spacers that should, if it doesn't want to work, make it work. But we'll see. So. Whew. Garage is still smoky. And with that, guys, I think we are done this week. I know this video is probably going to seem kind of hectic when I'm editing it. Um, it is what it is. It'll be fine. Uh... <laughs> I'm I'm genuinely kind of excited about this, so this is probably going to put the Corolla on pause for a minute. Not exactly the best idea in the world. Um, I'm going to try to work on them both at the same time. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I want to get this to where I can move it around, though, at least first. So, well, frankly, so I can put the Celica back up, because until this can move in and out of the garage on its own, the Celica can't come back inside. So it's kind of stuck outside, and I'm not super thrilled about that. Um, and I want to start getting the Corolla ready for dude to come over and do the white pipe. So a lot of things need to happen sooner rather than later. And I'm out of time for this week. It's, it's about time for me to start going back to work again. I've been off for four days. Time for my four days of work. Um, but yeah, but as always, thank you for watching. 
Hope you guys will enjoy the new product, or a new product, new project. I don't know how I feel about these yet. I do still have the wheels and tires off the Rambler too, so I could always try those and give it more of a hot rod look, but I don't feel like that's the right look for that. I feel like this is going to be better. I've also got a couple other set of wheels and tires to play with too. Um, so we'll, we'll probably play around with that when the time comes. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will see you next week. And remember, it's about the adventure, <laughs> not the destination. I will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.
Bob's almost done with this one, and then... And this is where he knocks it over prematurely. Yeah, you're gonna wanna start on the inside and work your way. If you ask Bob, I bet he'll let you knock it over. Yeah. Yay! We'll do that in a minute, baby. Let some other people do that first. You do that before mommy's ready, she might beat your butt. <laughs> Initial thought of doing this on a Monday was a better idea. Across this part. <laughs> 